Hi, I'm Joanne Woodson, a solo practitioner specializing in commercial leasing law. I've been a lawyer for a long time, and I know that there's a lot to wrap your head around when it comes to commercial leasing. The goal of my podcast, the Commercial Leasing Diva podcast, is to make your lives as commercial leasing professionals easier and more fun. In the podcast, I speak to other commercial leasing professionals who share their expertise so that we can all improve our commercial leasing game and better serve our clients. This year's California Lawyers Association annual Real Property Conference took place on March 24 and 25 at the beautiful Sonoma Mission Inn. In this episode of the podcast, I speak with folks about their conference experience with a special focus on those who were speakers at our annual Real Property Law Retreat. The speakers had a variety of experiences, um, all from the folks I spoke to, extremely positive, and many emphasized that being a speaker was a highlight of the conference and provided a deeper experience in terms of networking with their colleagues. If you, listener out there in listener land, are interested in being a speaker at our annual conference or at any of the Women in Leasing Law events, please don't hesitate to email me with your uh, possible topic or just that you'd like to be a speaker and I'm happy to talk to you about it and introduce you to the folks organizing next year's conference. One of the highlights of this episode is the emphasis that we bring to having some fun on the panels. So like in the right? trenches, <laughs> smelling fish. For many people, real property topics can be, let's face it, kind of dull. But as you'll see with the panels that we include, we bring seriousness and a depth of knowledge to the panels with a spirit of fun. You can be a, a type B plus person. <laughs> and I think that helps the medicine go down with a spoonful of sugar, as they say. So enjoy the episode. And this was your first time being a speaker though, right? Yes, yes. I have a, I can't remember if I mentioned, I have like a public speaking phobia. So, you know, it was nerve wracking. <laughs> it's a little bit nerve wracking standing in front of all of your colleagues and, you know, hoping you're getting it right. But I found it very valuable. Just the entire process of working with other panelists to create the content and then just the experience of speaking. It was really rewarding, you know. Um, you never realize just how deep your knowledge goes until you're put up on a podium and asked to speak to it. And then you realize, oh, I know a lot about this subject. I was in good hands with excellent co-presenters, obviously. So that gave me the confidence to try it out this time. When I represent the landlord, we start those conversations early, get a feel for whether they're open to the concept, open to some adjustments in the terms. Because on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm just working and just nose to the grindstone and you know the, the usual day-to-day. -day. It's very, very important to make sure that the sub landlord has obligations that are set forth in the sublease to make sure they have to pay rent. They have to notify you if there's an issue. It's actually really fun. And now that like I'm an older lawyer instead of like a baby lawyer, and I can talk about this stuff all the time. Also, another thing that's come up a lot are sub subleases where it adds another layer. And then maybe also because I don't have like junior associates like I used to, you know, at the firm or was one at the firm, you really get to like light up the eyes of these junior lawyers who you are actually learning in real time as Laura calls it from being from New York, the overlease, but we'll call it <laughs> California, the master lease. And in a context where there's no pressure, it's totally educational. The high level challenge is you're gonna receive a document that's gonna say, here, you get all of, you get everything that's from the, over, the overlease or the master lease. <laughs> I think it's really fun. And like, I finally gotten to the point now where, I mean, thanks to my co-presenter in, in definite part, but, I'm past that point of feeling like so nervous that I'm just, you know, just want to die. <laughs> and it's easier to get into the rhythm of actually just talking about, here's my approach on things, you know, here's things to look out for, here's issues. So I think it, I think it really adds to it. So now you've come to the master landlord, me, and said, please, may we um, 
and you could send to the subways. And unlike Catherine with her loosey goosey ways, <laughs> I, I pull up, I pull up the master lease and I say, oh well, what are you required as my sub landlord? <laughs> what are you required to do? Well. I need the following 50,000 documents that are clearly required by my master lease. Um, I need a signed sublease, none of this term sheet, Michigas. <laughs> right. um, I need um, a credit report on the subtenant, and that may mean I have to sign a non disclosure. I accept that. I want to know that you're getting someone in here who can pay at least the sublease rent, that has a good reputation in the business community, yada, yada, yada. And once you have perfectly lined up all this material, <laughs> then my clock starts on, if there is even a clock in my lease, that says how long I have to review. Which and just makes me crazy, because like, <laughs> you're just saying we have to spend how much just negotiating this whole sublease with those other people that you may just be like, meh. <laughs> and then you also like you feel like you're part of the the event itself as opposed to just an attendee and it has a different kind of dynamic about it and going to like everyone even going to um, other speakers um presentations it just feels like a little you know it feels really collegial you were a speaker on two panels which you don't <laughs> usually do but you graciously substituted when someone fell out at the last minute um, so what was your experience of being a speaker like? I have heard nothing but fabulous uh, feedback on your panels. Oh, good. That's good. That's always good to hear. Um, I like speaking on panels and I basically, if you can invite me the last minute to speak anywhere on anything and I'll show up and give it a whirl. I don't know that I'll necessarily say anything useful, but I at least try to be entertaining. Celebrity chefs are the biggest bunch of babies you've ever worked with in your entire life. It's like worse than doctors. And I say, <laughs> which I think is often overlooked at these events. They think they know everything. They don't. They have no interest in hearing what you have to say, but you got to say it anyway. But you get to go to the openings and eat the good food. So that is really beneficial. I had an amazing experience. You know, we're, as lawyers, we're often used to being the one kid who worked on the project and carried, they did the heavy lifting, you know, that was something from long ago, even in elementary school. And so it was so nice. I was on the panel with Jenny and Corinne and everybody just was so on top of it. We had a bunch of meetings. It went very, very well. First of all, I had two great other presenters with me. I was on a panel of three um, and the other women really knew what they were talking about. I knew Katie, she was opposing counsel one of my deals a few years ago so it was really neat just meeting her in person and putting a human right to the, to right. the emails. so my type a personality was just thrilled to be working with people who wanted to be prepared if, if not overly prepared wanted to facilitate and you know we're like let me do you want me to handle the powerpoint why yes i do so it, <laughs> that part was really great. That was really a fun experience. And she does a lot of landlord leasing. So it was really interesting to hear her perspective on some of the topics that we were presenting because a lot of times, you know, I, I'm primarily a tenant attorney. So a lot of times I have my head in the contract and I only see it from a tenant perspective and it's really good um, and valuable information to hear, you know, the landlord's concerns because that will help me figure out how to address them, you know, going right. forward. And the audience participation was fabulous. We were a little worried about that, but the people, again, you know, it's the caliber of people, but the audience was asking questions and we really had some lively discussions, which as a speaker is fabulous. It made it wonderful. Yes. And then the second panel I was on, obviously I was asked the week before and, you know, Elva, I've known Elva for a number of years and she's great. And so if I actually found out right before the panel that I had worked on a deal with one of the other panelists. We just found tenants. out that we worked together, yeah. like literally before this <laughs> panel started, that we had worked together on one right before the pandemic and we just didn't know, yeah. <laughs> which was fun. And it was, so it, it was fun. I, we just kind of jumped in and made it work and we had a lot of fun and plus restaurants are I think a little bit more entertaining than a lot of other types of leasing. What landlord likes to give a blank check? They don't. Katie, you're, you're probably- I have not you. yet experienced a landlord who willingly gave anyone a blank check. Right, so, well. <laughs> <laughs> so that really lent itself to that kind of uh, jumping into the deep end. It's such a good opportunity for me to meet with other people who are just so much smarter than me and involved and just really like, 
make sure that I'm staying sharp and up to speed by being around my peers, especially because I'm in a small firm or when I was on my own, you know, that's really important. One thing I knew what was going to happen and which did was that it was going to provide a great opportunity to meet like the fellow CLA committee members in person. You know, we've been Zooming for like several years now. And so right. having that opportunity to finally like hang out in person uh, was really great. And the people who come and the people who are involved are just, I think, incredible. So just being around them, whether I'm in, in the sessions and learning or whether we're just having the glass of wine afterwards or at lunch or doing yoga in the morning, because this time it happened to fall with the retreat. Yeah, that that is really very important. And of course, the CLE is also incredibly good um, and an added bonus. But, you know, what makes it different is because you can always get CLE online. So the being in person and talking about it and being able to discuss, oh, hey, did you go to this one? And what do you think about that is just amazing for me. The other aspect that I sort of forgot about, maybe it's the location because it was in Sonoma, which was fabulous, but is being able to reconnect for, with my Sacramento, fellow Sacramento lawyers. Right. And I was like, right. oh, that's right. And more of them, I was not even thinking about that, but more of them were there than I was expecting or was on my radar. So it was really nice and a pleasant surprise to be able to catch up. But that was what was so cool about it. There were a lot of opportunities to do that. I thought, I don't know that we need any more than what we had. I thought it was really a good line. And like the dinner, I talked to a, you know, a number of people that were on my list of, I want to be sure I touch base with them and see them and have a good conversation, not just like a, hey, and then move on. Right. Really had the opportunity to, to do that, both at the dinner and the breakfasts. And yeah, so I think the networking was spot on for me. Since the pandemic, a lot of our local programs have been put on like long-term hiatus or they're just Zoom only or very intermittent. And so all like those regular programs we used to do, we're just not having them anymore. And so I'm not seeing anybody, even though we're all here in Sacramento. So it takes right. a statewide program located in a completely different city for other Sacramento lawyers to like be able to catch up and hang out. So I really love that aspect of it. That was really a, a nice surprise. And then of course we're getting MCLE credit while we're at it. That was absolutely the best part of this conference for me. I think the best part of any conference is getting to meet your peers um, and getting to meet folks that work in maybe related but different fields, the in-person aspect and the networking aspect. And meeting new people at the dinner, hanging out at the wine tasting, it was just, the weather was perfect. <laughs> and so um, so I appreciate, appreciate that a lot. And I got to meet a couple of other commercial real estate attorneys, um, as well as a wills and trusts attorney um, who deals uh, you know, a lot with some real property issues as well. I had lots of friends there. I, people yeah. I hadn't seen in three years, right? And so it was great to kind of expand my network and get to know different people and um, kind of figure out, you know, how we can all support each other. How collaborative it was to be there was, mm -hmm. um, there were three of us at one point that were speaking during one of the breaks about uh, the fact that we're doing leases in New York. I've had people that I've negotiated deals with that I've never met in person. And, mm -hmm. and one, of, one of the attorneys there, Laura Drossman, is yes. licensed in New York. Yes, she is. And so the three of us sat down and basically were picking Laura's brain for a minute. People coming up to me that I didn't recognize because I didn't really know what they looked like, yet we've had conversations, like we've talked <laughs> monthly, right? I, you know, I ran into previous opposing counsels. Coincidentally, Laura had been opposed opposing counsel for a very brief time on a matter with me a couple years ago. So it was our first time meeting in person. I met another woman who ended up being opposing counsel the following week on a deal, which was hysterical. We were both just, you know, cackling at that. It was really great to see everyone in person. And there's no replacing that. So those were some of the aspects that I, I really liked a lot about the conference.
getting to know people and um, building relationships, that helps your clients, if nothing else, right? right? It helps you do better right. deals, but right. it also, I, I'm a solo, right? right. So these are the people I go to and I'm working with. And for the most part, I like, I don't think there was anyone there that I'd ever done a deal with. And I went, oh gosh, she's here, right? It, it, it was all good. It was really neat to have one, that connection of this is someone that I've had phone conversations with, but have never met, but also two of everyone getting together and being willing to share and yes. help and collaborate and, um, and you know, help each other uh, get through this instead of it just being this competitive market of us competing against each other. I appreciated that, um, so much of the socializing had been thoughtfully arranged outside and i appreciate that um, the gods shined on us and it was good weather but it was nice just a wonderful place to relax for a minute right and um uh, just take a breather and talk to folks and and meet new people too it's way more fun to have it when when the practice and the people that are practicing this area of law are, are way more uh, friendly yes. than, than yes. just seeing each other as adversaries. I, I really do enjoy that aspect of it. And even if you're not getting, you know, anything out of it necessarily in the way of new clients, it's really just getting yourself out there in your field and meeting other practitioners who can help. Seeing people who have come to the Real Property Retreat for you know, several years and so got to see them again. The one benefit I would say about being a bit of a repeat attender is getting to know people a little bit. And then the new people who have, this is their first time welcoming them. Um, I really enjoy that aspect. I think that's the best reason to go to the retreat. I mean, there's of course all the substantive law that everybody learns, but then that networking um, is really just the best part. You want to meet people, but if I know you already and I can go up and, and kibitz, as my grandma would say, with the people you know, then I'm right. sort of growing my, my group. Right. You're also yeah. deepening those relationships, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. So each year you go and you see people, even if you've only seen them, you know, once a year, over a few years, that starts to add up to more meaningful connection. Especially in a small firm, you know, I... I, I only have a small vision of the real estate market, right? I, I see right. what my clients are bringing in. I don't always have the bigger picture. And it's really nice just having those conversations with the practitioners and saying, what are you seeing right now? I'm like, right. I'm seeing that too. And it's just, um, right. that that aspect was really helpful. Angel Chelek, who's the um, wellness uh, fitness trainer mm -hmm. who comes, we met them at the prior retreat. And we've become friends and we've seen them socially. They live in San Diego. And when we visit San Diego, which we like to do, we look them up. So that relationship has yes. grown and, and so has it with a number of other lawyers. Mm -hmm. And uh, even if there's not follow up yet per se, the fact that you're both together at this meeting suggests a like-mindedness. I also find that when you meet people in person who are opposing counsel, um, you know, I'm able to say to my client, oh, I know Jane, I've met her. Um, she's extremely competent. I saw her give a presentation. So that will help smooth the deal. The fact that I know this person, I know they're competent. Um, I feel like we have a rapport because we stood around and sipped wine at some event. And I think that really ends up it, it increases your confidence because you're like oh i know this person you know they're a good person and so it's just about how do we problem solve whatever the issues are together um yeah. and i've really liked that that was an to me unintended consequence of meeting all these people over the years at conferences but it's like oh well anytime i have laura drosman on the other side i'm like oh laura so we'll figure it out like i'm not even worried like whatever and it doesn't matter and you know i you know, then you could be comfortable saying to Laura or whoever on the other side that, you know, you know, I appreciate that this might not be market, but my landlord client late fee is 10%. I appreciate that from your point of view that, you know, but my client, I know, would you agree to some other tweak that maybe would help your client? And I enjoy running into 
um, in this case, mostly women who are our are, are partners, pretty strong and talking about building their practice, how they get their edge. Solo practitioners who are such strong practitioners, they can think, talk about the practice in an absolutely non-boring way. That's just interesting to know how they handle things and the, the level of storytelling and just realize people who are, are good at this profession, Joanne, they're into it. That, right. that doesn't mean they're into it in a way a deep sea you know, free diver is into it, but they've embraced right. it professionally. They're very good right. at it. Their standards are high and that rubs off. Yes. That rubs off and it's it's good yeah. pick dust to be around. I think it's pr truly professional development. You might meet somebody at the at the uh, seminar and in not a self-effacing way, you might say, wow, that person's really performing at a high level. I need to make sure I'm at an equal or higher level. That's a great standard. It also opened up other opportunities for me. I wasn't quite expecting that. You know, um, we had a legal journal reach out to us after our panel asking us to uh, write an article for them, which was really neat. And so I really did enjoy um, the panel and then the, just the entire process, even from preparation all the way through through finishing it. But if you were a law firm and you needed to hire talent in a hurry and you were going to throw some money around. You could have a great recruiting exercise at the retreat. <laughs>